Okay, the words Tom Yamachi can mean anything to you? They mean a lot to a lot of people. I mean, you stop somebody in the street and say, you know, do the words Tom Yamachi can mean anything to you? Most of them will say, that's the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. That's what they'll say. And then this is Think Tech. They'll say that too. And I'm Jay Fidel. Today we're going, to have, we're going to talk about the 2019 legislature here on Talking Tax with Tom. And we talk about, uh, you know, the tax beat goes on in the 20, 2019 legislature. Welcome mm -hmm. to the show. Thank you for having me, Jay. And the beat does go on. <laughs> we have a, we have a full uh, a full dance card here today. So let's talk about the uh, the REIT bill, the Real Estate Investment Trust bill, and uh, those who would like to tax REITs here at the local level. Okay, let me let me just kind of give you some background. Um, REITs are uh, federally authorized, you know, vehicles. They're they're regular corporations, but they you know they file a form with the IRS to have special tax treatment, and 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 what that is is they have to get income from uh, the passive use of real estate, so rents, basically. And the deal is that if they distribute more than you know, 95, I think, um, 90 or 95% of their income to their shareholders, then they don't get taxed. Okay? They get something called the dividends paid deduction, which basically allows them to zero out their income and not get taxed mm. uh, at that level. And the now, shareholders love that, right? Shareholders love that. They like the disgorgement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about I don't know about that, but but uh, uh, like any other corporation, the shareholders are, the shareholders are taxed on the dividends they receive. Right. So I mean that doesn't change. Um, and in the and in the federal scenario, it's okay because uh, presumably most of these shareholders are citizens of the United States, and uh, if the feds don't get it from one place, they'll get it from the other. Right, so that they'll at least, at least get one level of tax. For us, we have a problem. And the problem is that when you distribute, when you as a corporation distribute dividends to a shareholder, the shareholder is taxed only in the place of the shareholder's residence. Okay, that's, that's been a long-standing uh, rule from you know, uh, centuries gone by. Mm -hmm. So what that happens is if you have a REIT, right, uh, which you know, does all this, this, this federal stuff and, and, and pays out uh, dividends to shareholders, there's no tax here because the REIT's not taxable, right? And at the shareholder level, the shareholders are taxed someplace else, if at all. If at all. If at all. Because a lot of the shareholders are, are exempt, exempt entities, like... Um, uh, Pension funds, for example, or, or um, tax-exempt orgs, you know, stuff like that. Um, they don't pay tax on dividends. What about an overseas shareholder? Uh, I don't think we'll be able to tax them either. And he may not pay tax in Hong Kong, for example. Yeah, I mean, for, for the, in the federal system, there, there's a way to get that income because dividend is withheld when it's paid overseas, mm -hmm. but we don't have something similar here. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we can. Okay, so it's unfair to the state of Hawaii. Uh, that, that, that's the point. At least a lot of, uh, a lot of people feel that way. And uh, there's been a couple of champions of this issue for about mm, six, seven years now, I think, trying to tax REITs here locally, you know, establish a, a, a tax at this tier, right. at, at the place of doing business. Yeah, so what, what the bills would do uh, would be to tax the REITs like any other corporation so that you would pay state tax here and whatever dividends are paid out, uh, the shareholders getting re dividends would pay uh, tax on those dividends. The dividends would be less though because the corporation would have to pay tax here and then it would deduct the tax it pays at a business expense, right? Right. So, so like any other corporation. Like any other corporation. Yeah. So that's, you know, that would, that would benefit Hawaii and there are a lot of REITs who own a lot of property. and. You know, that's the way our foreign real estate investment has worked, largely through REITs from far away, mm -hmm. on the East Coast, the West Coast. God yeah, and, and it turns out that in Hawaii, uh, there is a lot of REIT investment. Um, you know, Al Moana, uh, a lot of hotels, um, many of the shopping centers, the strip malls. And Commonwealth, which owns Mapunapuna and also uh, most of uh, Campbell. Um, so that's, that's, one, that's yeah. a lot of investment. It's billions of dollars of investment, and it's millions and millions of, of income every year through rent. 
So the question is, um, you know, is, is this bill have any chance? Because those guys are going to oppose this. They're going to bring all their forces to bear and, and try to stop this bill, as they have in the past. Yeah, and, and this year is no different. Um, the national lead organizations involved, uh, they got, um, you, know, the, the, uh, you know, the nation's foremost professor of uh, state tax, a guy named Walter Hellerstein, to weigh in and, and submit testimony. Yeah. How's it look? Uh, we don't know. At least it's still moving. Still moving. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the Senate bill definitely crossed over to the House. I think there's a House bill that will cross over to the Senate. So Both companion bills. Yes. Essentially the same. Yeah. Well, this would be very interesting to, uh, you know, to see. I'll tell you why. Because it's, you know, it's an example of our democracy in action. You have lobby groups. You have well-funded lobbyists who are in there every day walking the halls. This involves tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions to collectively to these REITs. They're, they're determined to stop it. Um, query, who's on the other side of that? Uh, is, is the, are the people on the other side of that as powerful, as influential, as well-funded in their efforts to push it forward? Well, the proponents of the bill are, are local real estate developers. Um, so, I mean, they, uh, they're obviously not REITs. So when, when, if they form a corporation to do the same thing, they get, they get double taxed like any other corporation. That's the thing. The guys who oppose it, to them, it's real dollars. Dollars out of their pockets, so to speak, at a local level. For the guys who are pushing the bill, it has only an indirect effect on them. And they're looking for the greater good, I think, for the state of Hawaii. Right. It's not the same motivations, and therefore it's not the same level of ad advocacy either. Well, I don't know. I mean, the, for the local people, they have to compete with the REITs, right? Hmm. So, so, so it is hurting them personally. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, wish them well. But uh, we'll have to check back with you on that. Now, the crossover is happening right now. and It's going to go into the, the switch committee, so to speak, right after the crossover is over. That, that's right. So right now at the legislature, uh, the House bills are being finished up and sent to the Senate. Senate bills are being finished up and sent to the House for consideration by the other, you know, by okay. the, what we call the non-originating House. Okay. Well, there'll be more committee hearings probably. And, yep. Uh, so that, that'll start probably next week or the week after, and then... Uh, and then it'll be madness again. <laughs> and then we'll check back with you on that. Okay, the next one is a TAT bill where the counties are trying to, uh, the counties are asking for a state statute that permits them to, uh, to add a surcharge on the TAT in all the counties. Um, yeah, so, wh so why are they doing that? Yeah, so, so here's the background on that. You know, for the last uh, four or five years, um, the, the counties have, and, and the state have feuded over how much of the TAT they will get because part of the TAT is shared with the counties. Okay, uh, for the, the earlier part of this century, it was a percentage. So um, uh, like for example, Maui got 10% of the take and I think Honolulu got 15% or so, or, or so on. Um, but in 2013, okay, you know, in the same statute that raised the TAT from seven and a quarter to nine and a quarter, it's, it's ten and a quarter now, by the way. Mm, okay. okay, it never goes down, you know. Yeah, it started off at five percent. <laughs> it never. And goes it was supposed down. to be temporary. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Um, that said, that what the counties get is going to be a fixed number. I mean, somebody uh, made the, um, you know, somebody got up there and testified before you know one of the legislative committees that they wanted you know, a stable and predictable source of revenue. Well, that's what they got. <laughs> a fixed number is stable and predictable. Ah, which is now? Which is now what they say inadequate. It's, I think, $103 million, uh, to be shared amongst all the counties. Okay, so it's inadequate. The states go to the legislature. The states are, I mean, the counties go to the legislature. The counties are advocating for this change. What does this change permit? And so what this change is going to do is... It basically resolves the question of, uh, you know, how much the county's going to get. Basically, what, what, what the bill will do is, is knock out the county sharing, okay? But the county will be allowed to add a surcharge on the TAT, just like how they are allowed to add a surcharge to the GET now. 
So the, the, right now, the counties get a part of the TAT. Right. Under this bill, they wouldn't get any part of it. They'd have to make a surcharge, and they'd get all of that. That's right. Wow. And they wouldn't have the same uh, amount of surcharge county, county to county. They do <coughs> Each county would do its own thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that's kind of one of the beauties of it. So like if, if uh, Maui, for example, uh, thought, oh, geez, we got too many tourists. It's ruining our you know, natural beauty and stuff. So they can, they'll, 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 they'll jack up the TAT really high. Um, whereas another county may be you know, more uh, willing to accommodate tourists and, and they, they, they would set their, set their bar lower. They can compete. They can compete. They can compete. They can go to, I guess they go to uh, the, the, the people who package tours and the like, people who you know, fill the hotels and say, we're a little cheaper on, on the TAT than the next county. Right. That'd be interesting to watch and see how, how that works. Yeah. yeah so um, uh, it's a very interesting idea. But how much, <clears throat> let me ask you again, how, how much were they getting? Have they been getting under the existing law? Um, and would this TAT be more or less uh, than that? Well, it's, you know, it's hard to de determine right now because there's so many blanks in the bill, okay, which is, which is typical for this stage of the, the process. Um, they leave the amount blank. They, you know, they, they give the county authority to it, um, uh, enact a TAT search up to blank. Um, so it, it's hard to... You can't, you can't. And we'll only know after conference committee, right? Right, right. Yeah. So... Um, it's just likely to pass? Uh, who knows? Yeah. Well, let's see, uh, you know, who would be pushing back? The hotels would be pushing back, wouldn't they? Maybe. Um, <clears throat> again, it, it, just, it just kind of uh, is, uh, you know, a speculation as to you know, who's going to come out better. Mm. You know, Tom, this is the part of the show where my head begins to explode. And whenever my head begins to explode, and I'm sure you have the same experience, I take a break. Watch this. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just kind of scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. There was a, an article in the paper about people who are fascinated with exploding grapes in the microwave. And I, I doubt you would have seen that, but there it was. You're, you're uh, thinking that your head is like that? Exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jeez. It's feeling better now. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's go to the next, uh, next bill, and that's uh, the carbon, carbon tax bill. We talked about that, a lot of discussion about it. And uh, certainly uh, that would be involved in the Green New Deal federally, I guess, something like that, you know, trying to tax carbon to de-incentivize use of fossil fuels, whatnot. Um, they disallow airplanes. <laughs> it's a hard one, though. Yeah. It's, 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 it's so new, it's so disruptive to everything that people are, people are not going to really warm to it, right? Yeah. Warm is, warm is a, a, a chosen term. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to do climate warming over that one. I see. <clears throat> so okay. anyway, <laughs> good one, Jay. Thank you very much. So, question is, how's it doing? Is it going to make it over the crossover? Yes, it's it's crossing over definitely. Um, what what that bill does in its current form is revenue neutral. So what it would do is it would take away the you know the multiplicity of taxes that we now have on, on on fuel. So right now we have the uh, the state fuel tax, the county fuel tax. We have the barrel tax. Okay. Uh, State and county fuel taxes, as you know, uh, are imposed on gasoline and similar types of fuels. You, you pay at the pump. Okay. Uh, the, the barrel tax uh, is a little bit different 
because it's imposed on fossil fuel whenever it's imported. Okay. And that one is more environmentally focused as opposed to fuel tax, which is supposed to be to pay for wear and tear on the highways. Okay. So you have you, you, you already you can, you can see some big winners and losers. Because right now there are some uh, big users of fuel that are exempt from the fuel tax, such as the power companies. That's how they that's how they burn you know, that's how they generate electricity. Okay. And the reason why they're exempt from the fuel tax is because they don't use the road. Fair enough. Fair enough, right? Uh, and also farmers. They have off-road vehicles, like the tractors and the, mm -hmm. and the plows and whatever, whatever else they're using. Uh, it's not on the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, uh, the fuel tax is, is supposed to be one of the primary uh, you know, feeders of the highway fund. Okay. So uh, rather than both of those, um, all, the, all the, the county fuel tax would remain intact. But what the state wants to do, or that bill is considering, is replacing um, the, the state fuel tax and the barrel tax with a carbon tax. And the, and the carbon tax would be based on you, you know, import or, or use uh, fuel uh, that, when burned, is going to uh, you know, put carbon into the atmosphere then you pay for the you know, carbon that is, is thereby produced. Mm. Okay. So uh, coal, for example, is taxed at a higher rate because it produces the most carbon uh, for, you know, per energy production. And then uh, I think uh, uh, natural gas is uh, one of the you know, you know, further down the list. So is this a bill that, that comes from a uniform bill from somewhere else, or did we write this bill right here at home? We're right here at home. I mean, no other state in the U.S., uh, statewide has a carbon tax. There, right. there are some cities who have adopted it on the mainland, mm. but there is no state carbon tax yet. I don't, I, I must say that I don't think people um, know about this very much. They don't know the details of it, and if they don't know, I don't think the legislators know either, and I'm, I'm sure there's going to be resistance to this because it's so, it is so, such a big change. And uh, you don't know the effect of it. I think it needs to be what's socialized among the public, socialized among the legislators um, for it to work. And, but on the other side of that, you know, it seems to me that Hawaii is doing, uh, aside from clean energy, which, you know, it could do more. It could do more. Um, aside from that, it, it seems to me that Hawaii is not putting a whole lot of money uh, into climate change. It simply isn't. Can you tell me of anything where the state is making a real monetary American dollar commitment on climate change? I can't. I don't think it's doing anything. And so, you know, so on the one hand, we really should do something in order to incentivize, uh, you know, diminution of the use of fossil fuels. On the other hand, uh, we're not ready. And, and many organizations um, are talking about climate change, and it's up to them, I think, socialize this idea and get people to understand it and want it and demand it and bang the table for it. But so far, I don't think that's happened. Yeah, so, so where we are right now is the, the bill's revenue neutral, uh, but there have been some calls for, you know, DBED or somebody to do a study on what would it take in terms of the level of the carbon tax to coax enough uh, you know, social change so we can meet our renewable energy goals. Um, in the time frame that we've set for it. And, and, and I can tell you right now, uh, to do that, you, you would need a, a carbon tax with a much greater number than we have. Okay. Yeah. So it would be, it would be revenue positive. And, uh, and I think you know, people in the government probably wouldn't mind that. You know, more money to go around. Uh, we as consumers would, would get, would get uh, hit in a number of places. Uh, we'd get hit at the pump. We get hit in our electric bills. We get hit in, in the in the cost of uh, you know farm produce. Yeah, but don't don't we have you know I'm I'm reminded of the recent London Economics uh, report that cost a million dollars for DBED on oh uh, uh, the question of what kind of um, um, utility model is appropriate going forward. And I I'm not sure that was worth a million dollars. I told him I would do it for a million. Um, but you know don't we have talent here? that could do this kind of study instead of 
going wide, like I know this will happen. And it will take years to make a study like this. And the study will be inconclusive. And then even if it is conclusive, there's a big question about whether anybody will listen or put it on the back of the shelf. Well, I mean, maybe they have the State Energy Office do something because the, the State Auditor found that they are not, they're they, not doing they anything They've right been now. defunded, haven't they, the State Energy yeah. Office? Maybe we can give that something for them to do. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when, while that reminds you of, uh, uh, you know, the London study, I'm, I'm kind of reminded of what's happened in France with the yellow, you know, the yellow jackets. Right. Yeah, right, riding in the streets because uh, among one of the things that made people so unhappy was carbon tax. Right, that was the central part of Yellow Jackets, wasn't right. it? Yeah, so you can see what might happen here. And I don't, I don't know what the um, intensity of the lobbying is right now on that bill, but I imagine there's not a whole lot of active support for it. Well, I think there's a, uh, not a whole lot of um, at least frontline activity on either side because, I yeah. mean, the hearings haven't been, you know, uh, attended with, uh, you know, packs of people yeah, yeah. pushing in either direction. Yeah, so what's your expectation I, I think, I think on this a, one? I think a lot of action is taking place behind the scenes. Yeah. We have to work on that. Yeah. <clears throat> and that one, we'll have to come back next year, I think, and talk about it some more. <laughs> okay, motor vehicle tax. This one's very interesting because it relates to a, a larger issue. Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, uh, there's... Right now, a bill is moving, and it's, and it's just crossed over, uh, to deal with the, the rental vehicle tax, which is what we pay for rental cars. And whenever we rent a car for a day, uh, if you like fly to Maui or, or Kauai to do business and you got to rent a car, then you, you pay this tax, among other things. Now, we, we enacted an amendment to this tax last year that says, okay, uh, we're going to charge um, uh, locals with a Hawaii driver's license $3 a day, but we're going to charge people without a local driver's license five dollars a day. Okay, um, trouble is you can't do that. As a state, you can't do that. It feels good if you're <clears throat> if you're local Hawaii. Yeah, that feels good. But then when you look at the Constitution, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, I mean, there's part of the U.S. Constitution that says we're supposed to, you know, uh, we're supposed to treat people from other states as our ohana. The Commerce right? Clause. It's called the Commerce Clause. Yeah. So. Uh, so, so we, we, we can't basically, we, basically we can't do that. Okay, so. So, so there's a, there's a uh, the, the way they're going to fix it, uh, and, and this is, I think, after at least one of the big car companies has mounted a challenge to the law as it currently is, and, and basically the AG and the Department of Tax have basically fallen on the sword and admitted it's unconstitutional as, as it now reads, and says, okay, we're going we're gonna to do a fix. We're going to charge $5 to everyone. Effective July 1st. That's a real fix, isn't it? Then, then fix. we get fixed, they get fixed, everybody gets fixed. Everybody gets fixed. <clears throat> See? See what happens when you, <laughs> when you fight with Mother Nature? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Somebody gets burned. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now that issue, that issue also comes up in the context of agricultural products. Can you talk about that? Yeah, there's a, there's a bill to, to award a GET exemption for... Uh, you know, food that's raised, grown, or caught in Hawaii. So you, uh, we, we raise, we raise uh, beef cattle, uh, we, uh, we raise crops, we, we sell coffee, you know, GT is in for all of that. Uh, other, other food we bring in, nada. Okay, no, no exemption. Uh, we already ruled on that. We, we already have a Hawaii Supreme Court case a number of years ago uh, called Hawaiian Flour Mills. Uh, that said, you can't do this. That, that also violates the Commerce Clause because it discriminates against other state stuff. And it's so, the same thing. The same thing. And it's against the Constitution under the Commerce Clause the right. same way. So, it's too bad because it feels good. You know, we do want to incentivize local agriculture. Yeah, everybody else does too. Yeah. But, but that would lead to uh, what the Supreme Court called economic balkanization. And, and they thought that was a bad thing for the nation. Mm. So that's why, you know, the rule is like the way it is. Just, just in, a, in the hypothetical, suppose I, I, I'm the legislature and I really, really, really want to incentivize local agriculture. How can I do it in a way um, that is legal, that is, that is constitutional? Don't use the tax system. Use, you know, use a subsidy of some kind. Everybody, everybody does that. Mm. Yeah. Subsidies are subject to different rules. 
Um, At the end of the day, it costs the government money just like a tax credit, though. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can do that. I mean, you, so that's not unconstitutional. Yeah, though. I think within reason you can. We have to do something about local agriculture. It's yeah. not growing at a rate that's nearly fast enough, not as nearly as much as we had anticipated and, and wanted. Um, you know, the, the, the uh, plantation agriculture died a slow death, maybe a quick death. <laughs> <laughs> and, now, and now we're faced with uh, all this land and, um, and being isolated and not having enough food here, except McDonald's, uh, <laughs> to deal with uh, extreme weather, for example, or some other kind of uh, crisis. And uh, we really read, better, better do this, but we haven't done it yet. If you want to make the state resilient, you know, you have to put money into dealing with climate change and also dealing with, you know, this kind of resilience on agriculture. Right. And, and, you, and you have to make it worthwhile for people to do farming. Yeah. So, I mean, if the legislature or the people who introduced this bill had been a little more thoughtful about the Constitution, they might have come up with something else. Maybe they'll come up with something else next time. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What about, oh, gee, could you, you couldn't do this in the form of uh, exempting any tax. It's only a matter of... Um, giving some, some, some subsidy instead. Uh, yeah. uh, just, uh, just before we close, though, uh, you know, Sylvia Luke at the outset had a new way of looking at budgets this year. What was it, zero-based budget or some words like that? Right. Um, what was that, and, and uh, is that something that's still in play? How has yes, it very been much, expressed? It's, it's very much in play. What, what, what they're doing is they're basically looking at, I think, a previous year's baseline budget, and... And they're saying, okay, departments, if you want any more, you gotta, you gotta go to your you know, get your justification, go to your subject matter committees, and make your case. And so, um, uh, one subject matter committee has already found uh, some excess funds squirreled away in, you know, DCCA. Uh, another one has found excess funds, I think, in Department of Labor. Um, the state auditor has has found excess funds in the, in the Department of Transportation. So, so all all this stuff is now coming to light, which is a good thing. I think. So, so we can at least see what's there and figure out, you know, where our priorities are and where we can use them. Is it a substantial amount, amount of money or just, you know, a little here, a little there? It's a substantial amount of money. Hundreds if of that's millions. the case, then we, we're likely to balance the budget this year? <laughs> I mean, with a, with a surplus? Well, I mean, you got, you got, a careful, you got to be careful what, what you say. I mean, if, if you say there's a surplus, uh, which is what the administration has been doing, then, you, then the union is going to kind of lick their chops and go, okay, we want, we want raises now. <laughs> Everybody wants the surplus immediately. <laughs> yeah, and then they have to go to the unions and say, oh, by the way, we spent the money last month. <laughs> so, so there's no, no surplus anymore, it's, which is what they did. <laughs> it's a delicate, fragile balance of all the powers that be. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Is. Thank you so Tom Yomachika, Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Thanks a lot. <laughs>